How to counter Islamophobia at the local level? And I'm going to use the example or the case uh, that we have dealt with in San Francisco uh, city and county, uh, beginning with the uh, ad, the bus ads that were put by Pamela Geller, uh, these Islamophobic bus ads that were placed at the San Francisco Muni and then followed by a number of other type of Islamophobic uh, incidents uh, around the city. The response to the ads uh, was a systematic response that we have undertaken. Uh, one, as immediately as the ads took place and were placed at the buses, uh, we called for a meeting with the San Francisco Human Relations Commission. Uh, so that's usually is a, an area within your city. Some might have a different tab or different names for it, but usually you have a commission uh, that is appointed by your city council uh, that deals with issues pertaining to racism, discrimination, issues that are cross-sectional that deals with a variety of issues. So that is the first place to actually uh, launch a complaint. Uh, which means that you have to immediately launch a complaint about what is taking place. The concept of the squeaky wheel gets all the attention. If you don't squeak, you're not going to get the attention. So my advice to you to begin with is that you have to learn how to squeak. Say alhamdulillah, but then squeak, right? So the fact that you're squeaking doesn't mean that you don't have a deep belief and faith. Uh, for the meeting, we actually had a number of groups that coalesced together for the meeting, including Jewish Voice for Peace, CARE, uh, uh, the National Lawyers Guild, uh, Agent Law Caucus. So we brought a number of groups uh, to the meeting in order to present that this is not only a concern of one individual, but rather a cross-section of uh, the city. The next stage is to go to the actual uh, San Francisco Municipal Transportation Authority, which is the uh, agency that is responsible for uh, the buses and oversees uh, ads and the uh, uh, permissibility of these ads to be placed on the buses in order to go to the agency that has direct responsibility. And similarly, we in all of these meetings, we had a specific asks, right? So when you go to the meeting to have a specific ask, one is that the city is responsible to create and to, uh, to fight racism wherever racism appears. Because so far, Islamophobia is saying that Muslims go and fight Islamophobia, which is, okay, we're doing this, but it is not your individual responsibility. It is civil society that should be responsible for opposing and pushing against any form of racism and bigotry that takes place in the society. And you need to place it at the foot of those who are responsible because they're our employees, right? So don't go into the meetings as if they are giving you what you call uh, uh, opening the door for you and you are so delighted that actually somebody opened. No, you are the boss and you're going to meet with your employees and these are their, their civic uh, employees that are elected or appointed and you need to go with the demands. That there is their responsibility. Second is that the city should actually act proactively with structural programs. Right? So don't go for what you call the uh, quick response, we're going to have a panel and get a Muslim up there and do the adhan. Right? I care less whether they do the adhan or not do the adhan, whether they have a hummus falafel or uh, uh, ethnic food or any of this nonsense. That for me is, has no place whatsoever. This is what you call, they, go, they get you what you call the okie doc they just get you what you call the symbolic uh, responses and there is no structural responses. So I care less whether the person can stand up and say Assalamu alaikum. I say thank you, take my Arabic class. I'm not in here to, to attend to your Arabic language instruction. What I want is a structural response and the structural response is the following. One, to actually have your heads of departments to actually attend a session for awareness of how to respond to Islamophobic incidents and racism 
as a head of the department. Because if you don't have a head of the department directing instructions down the chain, then again, you are just getting into what you call symbolic action, not actually structural action. So again, these demands that the directors of the programs need to be there, that you have the Department of Education and the Board of Education to be in involved, not only to issue symbolic resolutions, but to actually, again, do the hard work from a department heads all the way down. Then the second is to go to the uh, public health institution, all right, that provide public health to begin to identify both at the uh, service provider level as well as from the doctor level how to deal and confront Islamophobia. So you begin to deal with the city agencies that are responsible and have the means and the resources. Every department and every agency has what's called a cultural awareness program. And they have a cultural training program. And what you need is to incorporate the fight and the push against Islamophobia into this so it becomes from the top down level engagement. So that's a very important. Third, bring in resources in terms of research and uh, uh, material. So the person will say, I don't know, say, well, that's good, here's something to read and to actually share. So again, we have uh, issued joint reports with CARE, so you could actually use our Islamophobia joint report, annual report with, with CARE. You could use the Islamophobia study journal, has many research, both uh, uh, applied research as well as uh, framing and so on. So you could use that material, so when you go, because you don't want to have somebody that says the excuse, I don't know. Well, that's fine, here's the material, and here's uh, what you actually uh, need to understand and you need to take. Fourth element, in relations to the uh, Pamela Geller ad, in our meeting with the City Human Relations Commission, we asked for the resources that Pamela Geller paid for the ads to be taken from the city municipal authority and to be directed to the Human Relations Commission to actually fund projects on Islamophobia. Okay, because we said that the city should not benefit financially from acts of racism because the Pamela Geller paid for the ads at the buses. We said that the San Francisco Municipal Authority should direct those resources that came from Pamela Geller ad to be going to the San Francisco Human Relations Commission and the San Francisco Human Relations Commission to use those funds in order to actually fight and use them to educate the society in general on relations to Islamophobia. That's going to be a battle. So again, nobody lets go of the dollar from their pocket, especially bureaucratically. And that's where you use your allies within the city, city council, and others to make that push in order for those resources to get at the Human Relations Commission in order to begin to fund those uh, projects that are needed. Right? So again, and what happens in here, you actually used or made possible for the funds that came from the Islamophobic industry to be directed to the city to fight Islamophobia. All right? And you're doing it structurally. You have to be persistent, you have to be systematic, and you have to engage in order for you to make those demands and constantly say that it's the responsibility of the city. All right? If they tell you it's your responsibility, you say, no, it's not my responsibility. Our responsibility is to point to the problem. Your responsibility is actually to address the problem because you are in that position of leadership. So I want you to be very clear not to internalize the problem and I think it's a problem of understanding Islam. Right? Islamophobia is not about the wrong understanding of Islam or ignorance. It's about racist. Right? Using racism against a group that they have racialized, which is the Muslims. Right? I use the example the following. If somebody hits you in your face, the problem is not that your face and you go and run and get a plastic surgery to purify yourself. The problem with Islamophobia is a person had the audacity to take their fist into your face. That's the problem. It's not whether you're beautiful or not. Again, it is actually the audacity for having to act in public or in civil society to assault Muslims, whether verbally, whether in violence, 
whether to target their institutions, and that is the problem, and that's where the city and civic institutions have to be involved in order to challenge and use structural challenge to Islamophobia in that way. So again, to direct the resources and to bring in the resources from uh, Islamophobic content uh, to be directed to addressing the issues of Islamophobia at a structural level. So again, this is very important and significant. Now, on that, then you begin to, you, to have what you call your public campaign. So we set up uh, public gatherings in order to get people's testimonies and to speak publicly about it. And the city, the San Francisco Human Relations Commission held a hearing uh, to hear from the community and we organize a number of speakers to actually speak about their experiences, bringing kids who use the buses to speak about their experience. We got some of the bus drivers, some are Muslims, to speak about their experiences and individuals who are riding the bus. So we actually got the public hearing in there and then similarly something that was done in the community and that's to create the greater swell of support for the initiatives that we are pushing at the city level. So that's at the local, localized way in order for you to deal, to, to use those uh, aspects of uh, what I consider to be civic engagement in order to alter the Islamophobic content that is being deployed, San Francisco and other, uh, and other cities around the country. On the back of this, we began a set of other programs. So we approached the San Francisco General Hospital uh, there's a number of MDs in there that experience Islamophobia. So the general director of the, of the hospital, likewise, began to have these uh, regular training program for their department head. So the general hospital actually organized, now they have already done three panels on Islamophobia at the San Francisco General Hospital which deals of how to be an ally, how to identify Islamophobia, how to identify for the victims who are facing Islamophobia. So I know that Muslims, we have many MDs, right? How many in this room? Uh, don't worry, we're not going to ask you to give any uh, exams to people. Right? Or your parents. So if you're in the MD, your role is to go back to your hospital and ask them to organize similarly a department heads training both to identify Islamophobic relations that exist with patients on the one hand, but also in general to, to get people awareness of how to identify individuals that have faced uh, issues of Islamophobia that might have developed mental health issues as a result of this. So we're trying to get at the San Francisco General Hospital to create the first clinic uh, that specifically focused on Islamophobia as a mental health issue. What is, what is taking place is that we're shifting the paradigm from Islamophobia being on this side to Islamophobia being dealt with from an educational aspect, from public health aspects, so Islamophobia is a public health issue, rather than constantly we focus about Islamophobia as we're dealing with ISIS, as if the problem, again, is for Muslims to answer for ISIS, as everyone is a representative quote of ISIS. So it's also shifting the landscape and the paradigm of how to deal with Islamophobia in a structural way. So hospitals, are, uh, again, are an important site right now to do that, as well as uh, uh, public education, I think CARES report on bullying and the effects of bullying were 55% of kids that were uh, 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 polled actually responded that they were bullied in school and therefore the site of engagement and investment is also how to make sure that the school is having a racism free uh, environment and racism free classroom and for this there are two components one is on teacher and administrative training but the other is on curriculum so now I'm actually serving on the California statewide curriculum reform in order to go through the curriculum in the K through 12 to make sure that the curriculum itself is not uh, Islamophobic so the only time that Muslims are engaged is in relations to terrorism violence and otherization rather than to, for, to put the full spectrum relative to Muslims in the normative sense like any other community so these are important battles not everyone is going to deal with uh, all of it so you need to actually choose and select exactly where you are for us at Berkeley because we have a center where 
really engage in multiplicity of lines. So we have a line of research on education. We have a line of research on public health and uh, mental health. We have a, a line of research on media and politics. So those are the various lines that we have. For you as a community activist and organization, select one area that you could concentrate your effort and hopefully you could have an impact. If you're persistent, I am very confident that you could actually make an impact at the local level. And you could start as small as the public library and making sure that the public library actually has a programming that will address Muslims and Islam and address Islamophobia. And that's an area where you could immediately, in a very short investment of time and effort, that you could actually begin to do that. And for the library, we did, again, the, uh, a whole series of book readings in the public library, where we mashed a book, where a monthly gathering that takes place, and you read the attendees read a book and you have a discussion about it. And that was one way to create a small community that later can be engaged for other parts of civic engagement. So again, I want you to respond to Islamophobia in a structural way and to constantly put the onus of challenging Islamophobia in civil society and those in leadership position. It is not your individual responsibility in civil society in terms of overall. Your responsibility is to raise the problem and to uh, bring those issues to the table and then assign the responsibility to civil society to address it in a structural way, in policy and in trainings that could begin to challenge and alter the picture. So I, I'm just giving you an overall uh, you know, framing of what needs to take place, but I definitely encourage you to uh, tune in to the Islamophobia conference. We have about 48 papers uh, from across the world. We have a group from Australia that is coming to present their own research in Australia. We have the European uh, Islamophobia report, and then the Haas uh, Institute will present their own work on on the political landscape in the U.S. and which uh, zip codes and which political uh, institutions are engaged in Islamophobia, so you could actually be able to trace it at your local level uh, by entering your zip code and getting that information. So that will all be available for you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.